welcome to Retro Americana. I'm your host, Jeremy Scott. We've got a lot of shenanigans planned for uh, this episode, so let's get started. First up, Burger King commercial featuring these uh, Star Wars collector's glasses from the 80s. The collector glass thing, I don't know about some of you out there, but that was a really big thing. They, they don't do that anymore, not really. And I'm gonna tell you something, Burger King hit a monster home run getting the Star Wars licensing. I mean, they probably made more money off that than they did the Whopper. Oh! I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't have the facts. I just make stuff up. Anyway, um, I have a few of those, and since they were so mass-produced, they're not terribly hard to find. I mean, I got three or four of them at Neat Stuff in Tahlequah, Oklahoma for, I think, maybe $15 for three or four of them. I mean, so they're really cool, though. I try to be careful at home when I'm drinking out of them because I'm like, eh, careful, even though they're mass-produced, I don't want to break one. Anyway, check this out from the 80s. Burger King commercial featuring some Star Wars commemorative glasses. Yo! Burger King presents four bright, colorful Star Wars glasses. Hey, it's Luke Skywalker. And the Princess Queen. Wow! Get your kids a different Star Wars glass each week. Buy a regular serving of Coke for 59 cents plus tax. Get Chewbacca. Get Darth Vader. Star Wars glasses at Burger King until February 2nd. All right, up next, kids, we've got a Budweiser commercial from the 1950s. Now, we will be doing 50s and 60s commercials, but if you happen to watch the third season, we had a whole lot of those, so I'm not gonna do too many of, of those this season. But I love the music in this, and it takes a while to get to its point, which is kind of interesting, and, and only 50s commercials would really take those kind of liberties. And I like how it has the church key method of opening up beer cans. That was kind of the original way of doing things and then it kind of went to the pull top and then we have what we have now with just the pop top and it all stays, it's all one thing. But I, would, I think it would be really cool if Budweiser or, or somebody would do like a, a special edition of that where you go to the store, you get the six pack and it comes with a church key. I mean that's the only way you're going to get it open. They look like little oil cans. I don't know. I just like old school stuff like that. So check this out from the 1950s, a Budweiser commercial. And by the way, Budweiser is no longer American owned. It's not my fault. I didn't tell him to do that. And, hey, shut up. I didn't tell him to do that. Okay, check it out. yourself the most inviting glass of beer you've ever tasted. Sure. Cold, golden Budweiser with that good taste for good times. So go ahead, live life every golden minute of it. Enjoy Budweiser. Every golden drop of it. Budweiser beer is for folks who know where there's life. Next, kids, we've got a Hardy's Frisco Burger from the uh, early 90s. The Frisco Burger has been on and off the menu of Hardy's for some time now. Currently, as of the filming of this episode, it is. But it'll be my luck that it's off and I look like a complete dick. Anyway, it's, it's a pretty good burger. Uh, it's very messy, so if you're eating it, make sure you're not driving, because you're gonna get crap all over you. So check it out. Oh, and I, before we go, it does kind of seem like a rice -a commercial when you first start to watch it. So imagine you don't know what it is and just think it's a rice -a commercial because it seems like that for the first few seconds. Check it out. 
Francisco is famous for three things. Cable cars, the Golden Gate Bridge, and that delicious sourdough bread. The secret to Hardy's new Frisco Burger. Introducing Hardy's Frisco Burger. Grilled sourdough bread topped with a thick Hardy's quarter pound burger, melted Swiss, sizzling bacon, and sliced tomatoes. <laughs> if you want the best of San Francisco, get a Frisco Burger at Hardy's. Are you ready for some real food? Hardy's! And don't forget Hardy's new Frisco breakfast sandwich. All right, up next, folks, we have a big boy. We got a big boy here. He-Man from the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most successful toy lines ever. We're going to show a couple more He-Man uh, commercials throughout this season. No, spoiler. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, but just to show you how big of a He-Man fan me and my little brother were, here's a picture. Yeah. Two Castle Grayskulls. Two. Yeah. We weren't kidding around. Uh, we were a He-Man house and Star Wars and G.I. Joe and Transformers. Okay, we had a bunch of stuff, okay, but He-Man was a big deal. Uh, and I would recommend, if you have not seen the series, The Toys That Made Us on Netflix, I recommend that. It's an eight-part series. He-Man's one of them. They really go in-depth. And they did a fine job of, of getting into the genesis of the whole line and, and through its entirety. So if, you, if you're a Netflixer and you haven't seen that yet, check it out. And if you have seen it, watch it again. You know it's cool. So check this out. A He-Man commercial from the 80s. Beastman sold so mad for battle armor, He-Man. Beastman, battle armor, He-Man, and Skeletor each sold separately. Take that! Just a dent. And that! More dents. But look! They're gone! Only He-Man has this power. Oh, yeah? Battle armor Skeletor has it, too. Now the real fun begins. Battle armor Skeletor and He-Man figures each sold separately from the Masters of the Universe collection. Beastman figure also sold separately from Mattel. All right, up next we have a Johnny Cash Christmas special for you. Now he did uh, a few of those from, I think it was 76 to 79. This is from the 77 special. Uh, has a lot of the kind of people you would think, uh, uh, Roy Clark and a few other people though. Uh, of course his wife. Uh, but you know, when I see this commercial, it makes me think of something that if they were to you know, release them on DVD or something like that, that it would be a great gift for Mima and Papa. <laughs> you know, so would uh, Matlock, the complete series, or uh, Hee Haw, the complete series, or Green Acres, the complete series, or Columbo, the complete series, or A Murder, She Wrote, the complete series, or uh, The Waltons, the complete series, or Little House on the Prairie, the complete series. You getting my drift? Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Join Johnny and June Carter Cash. Their guests, Roy Clark, Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, and Carl Perkins, as they relive some of the most important Christmases in Johnny's life. The Johnny Cash Christmas Show, Wednesday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. Tonight on CBS. All right, up next, folks, we have a Monistat commercial from the 1990s. Um, Monistat is used to treat, um, uh, it's, it, uh, it's a medicine that, uh, it's an over-the-counter drug that, let's just play the commercial. Over 36 million women have had yeast infections. If you're one of them, I have great news. Now you can get the number one prescribed cure without a prescription. You may already know Monistat 7. For years, doctors prescribed it more than anything else. They trust Monistat because it's not just for symptoms, but a cure. If you think you have a yeast infection, see your doctor. If you know you do, get full prescription strength Monistat 7. Up next, we have a Wendy's commercial from the 1990s uh, featuring the founder, Dave Thomas. Now, like Colonel Sanders, who actually got him started because Dave worked for the Colonel for a long time. Uh, he was the spokesperson for that. Actually, he has a record for appearing in more ads and commercials uh, than any other founder 
in fast food history. Pretty cool. I was like Dave. He always came across as a as a nice guy, the kind of guy that you know lived down the the block from you and had a little hamburger store and come in and knew your name, knew your parents, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he passed away in 2002, and uh, his for a little while his daughter kind of took over as a spokesperson thing. That just didn't work out. A uh, little trivia for you: My good friend uh, Greg Markey got palmed a coupon by Dave Thomas for a free frosty at his high school graduation. Boom. Pretty cool. Hey Greg, I gave you a shout out. Who loves you more than me? All right, check this out. Wendy's commercial from the 1990s. We'll be right back. When Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's, suddenly has a craving for his thick bacon mushroom belt, he'll drive any distance and face any obstacle to get one. Because it's a quarter pound of fresh beef, three strips of bacon and mushrooms in a cheddar cheese sauce, all on a toasted Kaiser bun. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Come in and try our bacon mushroom melt today, only at Wendy's. All right, that's the show, kids. Uh, you know, but before we go, I want to make one more reference about... Uh, Wendy's and, and their place in history. That square patty thing that they did really made them stand out, I think, because there's a million burger places out there, but they got the square patty. That had to have like brought people in when Wendy's was first getting started. Like, I got a square patty. Maybe that makes it taste better. I don't know. But just a little thing, sometimes I'll make a square patty at home. Like I cooked some deer meat the other day. Made a deer burger. I made it square so I could feel like I was at Wendy's. <laughs> All right, kids, we'll be back next week, uh, June 17th, with a brand new episode. So uh, make sure to uh, like our Facebook page and subscribe to us on YouTube. See you next week. Bye. I love you.